condition I was coming out that people didn't really care for, but you know, but we we were just we just wanted to play, you know, so, somewhere. Me and my friend, um, we'll call him um, Max, and um, uh, Max had a car and I did not, and uh, there was a place in. Um, Louisville, Kentucky, that was, um, that had, uh, what they call encounters. Basically, every week, they would, uh, they would have a set adventure for you, and, um, so pretty much you go through with the same character, different character, doesn't matter, just to try out, meet other people, and learn how to get started, or to, um, just learn the game. And so that sounded like a good idea at the time. So um, me and Max went went over there, and um, it was a little hobby store. And um, I had no idea how to play the fourth edition version because I've been playing three for probably about a year before that, and fourth edition has been out for a year as well, probably. And it, it wasn't new, new, but it was new enough to us. And so um, he wrote up both of our character sheets because he had access to things I didn't have <laughs> at, at at the time. So so uh, I said I just want to be a rogue character, which a rogue is like a thief, or it can be like uh, a treasure hunter or a dungeon 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 delver. Or, or something like that, where where basically, you. Uh, your skills are stealing, um, thievery, and all kinds of stuff that have to do with that. But the best thing about the rogue is the backstab, which is basically if you have advantage on your opponent, in in combat, you get to hit him in critical areas to do extra damage, you know, and. Um, which is like, uh, it's basically like if you ever played Skyrim and you have Sneak Attack. Which is what it's called. It's called Sneak Attack. Basically. And and so you also get this um, increase in damage and to attack when you take enemies by surprise. You know, that's what it's there for. You are DPS. You are to do damage fast, quickly, and get out because you may be not as you're not frail but you're also not girthy enough to go head to head battles so you're gonna have to so you're not the player to take um to take blows and so i think he knew that so to speak because max brought a barbarian and a barbarian is a class that's pretty much like a fighter but loses all the armor and just through animalistic brutality, goes into battle and just slays people. Like, um, that's what he does. And they get buffs from a thing they called rage. Rage makes you twice as strong. It, it sometimes gives you hit points. Um, it can do all kinds of things. And But basically, the damage increase and the defense increase is what matters the most. When it comes to berserking, especially at low, low levels where uh, enemies just do sword and mainly physical attacks. Because that's what the really barbarian at low levels absorbs. You know, he, he, he is, he's not a tank. He is a damage dealer. He's an upfront. He'll trade blows. He's made the trade blows and out doing more damage than the opponent. You know, a tank is takes damage and then is there to support. You know, uh, which is what the cleric really is. <laughs> it's kind of a tank, uh, but whatever. There's different kinds of tanks or different type of DPS. So yeah, whatever. And um, so for basically, we've been going. We go for a couple a a, a couple of times. And um, one one day, um, he 
we're playing our characters as usual, messing around. There was like five other people there that were with us, so seven in one part of this group, and not including the um, DM, which is called the Dungeon Master. And uh, and so uh, there were these enemies that are that are like I don't know twenty to thirty HP each hit points. And, uh, and there's a, there's like groups of them and I think they might be goblins or kobolds, but still they don't go down in one hit. Uh, enemies that go down one hit in, in fourth edition are called minions. They have one HP. They're just there to fill the room and, and just surround the heroes. And this is why you need wizards basically there. They're AOEs, you know, like area of effect damage. Where it's basically you could just clear them out with a normal spell, you know. So that was their sort of role to to control the room, basically. But these were not minions. These were hit point, like like uh, grunts, you know. And and so Max the Barbarian, which I'll be calling him Max as a barbarian, in character and as a player. And so, um, that was his real name, but I forgot his real name. But he was a, um, basically, he, he went into battle and during a rage with his great axe, which does a D, 1d12 damage, which is basically, it's a, um, a D12 is a 12-sided die, and, uh, it's 2d6s worth of damage basically on one dice and it, and it looks a little weird it look it looks like a 20 sided dice except it doesn't have of course it doesn't have many sides and and so he goes in there and he spots the leader he's like i want the leader and he rages and he he rolls his attack and it's a and it's a crit and he goes like oh it's like okay so there's no way he's going to kill the leader he has like double the amount of HP of these grunts, which was like 40 to 50 HP. You know, I don't quite remember the HP count of the leader, but you know, it's the leader. You know, he's not supposed to be taken down with one blow. And I think you know where I'm going with this already. Because um, he decided that um, he was going to, uh, so pretty much we do a crit, you take everything and double it. At least that's how we were told. It, it was. Uh, but there's probably people out there like 4th edition, like, no, that's not how that works. But Fourth edition is a long time, a long time ago now. So, so sorry. And this was in the early days. So maybe they didn't understand the rules, or we don't understand the rules. Even though it's very black and white when it comes to the rules, when it comes to fourth edition, um, I don't quite remember, and I don't feel like looking it up. So, but basically, he rolls a twelve on his one twelve-sided dice when it comes to his great axe, and he just lays into this leader. And so um, he's like, oh, like 12 times 2 is 24. And then some kind of, uh, some kind of, um, and then you have to add the multipliers from his rage. And it somehow ended up at 60 damage. And people were stunned. Like stunned. Like a level 1 character should not be able to do 60 damage to one person, to one creature. It shouldn't happen. But it did happen. Like, luck was on that side. And it just stunned everyone. And, and and they were like, we should not mess with this guy. Ever. Because he will kill us in one blow. <laughs> one hit. Not knowing the, you know, the odds of this happening again. It's, it's almost next to none. So, um, we kept coming back, coming back, and we kept going. Like, he reached level two, the three, and then we end up at the final conflict of the entire thing. And, uh, excuse me, I need another drink because I'm running out of, my throat is, my, th my throat is dry. So... So the whole point of it, it was pretty much a, 
Romeo and Juliet thing with this adventure. And so we got to the... Um, we pretty much protected Romeo. We got him away. And now we're going after Juliet. Because uh, she, was, she was kidnapped by this witch. And so... And our DM's brilliant wisdom. She decided to come up to us as we walked in the door to the hobby shop. And said, hey, there's something that's going to be going on. And... The, the witch is going to control two player characters and it was us. Max the Barbarian and Guardian the Rogue. <laughs> and we're like, okay. Uh, so she, oh. Well, she did ask us. She was like, hey, do you want to be uh, do you want to be the ones being controlled? And they were like, and we're like, yes. So when it came down to the end, you see, uh, when it comes to D&D &D encounters, you're not supposed to lose. Ever. <laughs> if you lose, um, Wizards of the Coast gives you a call. And they're saying, hey, especially at legit events. And they say, you're not supposed to lose. Like, that's not supposed to be possible. Because it's made for everyone to do it. But that's kind of a stupid thing to say because no matter what you do, you're going to end up playing. Even if you die. You make another level one character, you move on. It happens. And you're not really, you're not penalized that much. Unless you're going to each event and leveling up your character so much. That's why it, it, it upsets them because it takes them, you know, months to level up characters in, in, in real time. And they don't like that. How if characters die, then they won't then they won't progress. You know, but I think the obvious answer to that would be I don't know. Have them at the same level as the rest of the party. <laughs> but I digress. So 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 we come up to the end of the adventure. And the witch cast her spell to control two people, which is us. And, um, again, Luck happened to be on Max the Barbarian's side. And he, he calls out to everyone across the table. Like he's standing there with his axe. And he's like, okay. And he rolls in intimidation, which didn't even matter because he, because... They said, like, remember what I did with this axe? I can do the same thing to you. <laughs> and they were like, oh, yeah, that 60 damage he did level one. Imagine if he hit us now. <laughs> and so he, um, and so they're pretty much like, if you don't want to die, you come to our side. So... Pretty much. Um, so on the and then and that was his turn. He didn't even berserk because he didn't really need to, because that it's sort of a legend around the table that he did sixty damage at, at level one. And so it's like we can't mess with this guy. It 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 was on their faces, and I was like, oh. Uh, oh no <laughs> and so the first up was the wizard on 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 our team he decided like I'm a frail wizard so if he hits me with that I'm dead so he decides to turn as well and max played it very well because he knew that he would he would kind of get away with it by talking about how he crushed enemies with his axe. It's brilliant. It is so brilliant. And I've, and I've barely had any stories like that. But I, I, I do have some. But this is his time to shine. And um, 
Right? Because it was a brilliant move. So next, um, it was a, the, the, the Paladin wouldn't budge. And so everyone except two, two players are on the, the evil side. And we crush them. We, we obliterate them. Because not only is there like four player characters on the witch's side, there's like, um, there's other monsters too. And the witch herself. I'm like, yeah, you guys are doomed. We should have. Um, yeah, it was. If you know anything about. I mean, it was cool. <laughs> the, but it wasn't cool to do to everybody. Because the guy playing the paladin got really upset. That, he, that the good guys weren't able to win at, in the end. I'm like, yeah, I know where that's coming from, but that was so awesome. <laughs> that was so cool. Like, um, and so, like, we're sorry, but we had to play, like, he knew how to play his character because, believe it or not, like, and when it comes to D&D &D encounters, role-playing is not even a thing. There are way too many people and they're disjointed, and then when it comes, it's pretty much a dungeon crawl with a little bit of story in front of it that you can't really interact with. Which is why I don't like going to events. Because it's like, you have no input. It's just a place to hack and slash your way through. And it's like, the role-playing is, like, not even secondary. It's something in the background that you could put your two cents in sometimes. Maybe once out of every hour you can put your two cents in. And that two cents doesn't matter. Not at all. And that kind of makes me upset. This is why I prefer the homebrew version of D&D. Where basically people can interject all the time. And that's how real life works. You know, I mean... When it, comes to D when it comes to D and D, I know it's not real life, but when it comes to like real people, real characters, um, they're going to do. They're going to have autonomy. You know, you can't control them with the script. You know, that's. And uh, even if there is a script, there are ways to make sure that the characters can do what they need. Because believe it or not, taking a bard into a dungeon carter is. It may be a challenge, but you can't talk to people. You can't use your charisma the way you want. You know, it's, it's, I just don't like that. Like, there has to be uh, a bit of talking and all that stuff and, and, a, and a sense of combat. Um, but everybody has their thing, though. Everybody had their thing. Like, there's... Sometimes I'm like, I just want to... Sometimes I just want to hit things, but... There is... And there is a... There's a definite, like, need to that. But how you get there is... Is hard to do. Because everybody has a different idea of what's going on. But not... But there's no need for that in D&D &D Encounters. It's just that it's a book you go by. If you don't go by it, then you can't play. I'm like, uh, I'm sure it's it's probably changed somewhat by now, but I don't know. I'm the, I went to Pathfinder events at at Gen Con. It's just the same. I'm like this is not for me. It's fun to roll dice, but I feel like I'm missing out. When I can't play the character I want to play. And I... Anyways. I think that'll be it for that story of Max the Barbarian. I hope that little tangent at the end didn't do pretty, pretty, pretty good. But yeah, oh, it's probably changed in a big way. Absolutely, but I don't know. We just play homebrew now since it's 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 a lot better. If you um, well, a good thing to do is to start with a 
free main adventure and then go off from there. Um, like begin with something that's made for beginner players and then go off from there. Because that's not a bad way to do it either. I just don't like to read. <laughs> I usually learn from playing and seeing what's going on. Then, then I probably know what, what's going on. That's, but yeah, uh, I don't know what to do anymore. So.